Hey guys, let's talk about interoperability. This is how computer systems or software communicate from one system to the next. It could be within the same language. So you might have a Java app sitting on a server in, I don't know, California, and you have another Java app sitting in another room or another server across the world, and they're not the same app. So how do you communicate between app A to app B? There have been many different solutions uh, put out there over the years by different uh, companies and individuals and nerds. Interoperability also has a lot to do with communication of disparate software systems. So what does that mean, non-nerd? You could have an AI developed in Python, and it does a, its processing and outputs a certain amount of data. Now, this Python AI can then send that information to a PHP web app or a Java web app or a Ruby web app. And so how would you communicate between a Python-based system versus the Java-based system, the JavaScript-based system, or the PHP-based system? So as I just said, there's many different solutions that have been put out there over the years. These days, most common is something called JSON, JavaScript Object notation json now json is just basically a little bit of javascript code wrapped around the information that you want to send from computer system a or software a to software b it's pretty much the universal standard these days prior to json people used to use xml to exchange information now the problem with xml to exchange information oftentimes the xml code was so verbose, meaning there was so much XML code, meaning there was so much XML code that oftentimes there's more XML code than there was actual data that you were exchanging from system A to system B. I never liked XML personally. And so some smart nerds came up with the idea of JSON, which is basically a basic JavaScript structure. Uh, it's kind of like an array. And it's much more lightweight than the XML solutions that were out there. So that took over. Typically, if something is easier and faster, it wins. And that's pretty much what it is. Now, there are other ways of doing that, of course. But JSON is the uh, most common approach in terms of sharing information from one computer system or one piece of software to the next. You could do it with SQL. You could do it with databases, of course. You could do it uh, with XML. You could do it with, uh, back in the day, I don't think they do it anymore, something called RMI, Remote Method Invocation. That was one way that they did that in the Java world only, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But these days, if you're interested in sharing information between one system or the other, my advice is to just look at JSON first. That's probably going to satisfy whatever requirements that you have. So let me end off by saying this goes to show once again, as I've been teaching and preaching for a while now, that the web tech is probably the best set of technologies, set of languages to learn. It's so universally applied. You see web technology used in uh, front-end development, of course. There's nothing replaces that in terms of web apps and websites, of course, HTML, CSS, JavaScript. You see it used in uh, mobile development. You see it. You see web technology like JavaScript uh, used on the server with Node.js and Express. You see, it's just, you see, it, you see the web-based applications have pretty much replaced thick client traditional apps for the most part. Yes, there are exceptions. If you're building video editing software, you're not going to do that with web technology. You're going to be doing that you know, in C++. But generally speaking, for most business apps, which means most of the work that you'd ever run into, the web tech is king. That's why I advise people, the first set of languages, the first technology stack to learn is the web stack. It's just, it's just got the most opportunity, the most application, uh, out there. And then once you have the web stack under your belt, then you're, you're free to explore any type of specialization. If you want to get into AI programming, you can jump into Python pretty easily. If you wanted to go into mobile development, you could do that with responsive websites. That's the easiest approach. Or you could uh, take it to the next level. You can develop a true mobile application with something like a phone gap or uh, there's a Cordova. Well, phone gaps based on Cordova. And there are others. The web tech is cool. Interoperability 
Again, easiest way to do that most of the time is using JSON, which is JavaScript object notation, which again is derived from web technology. All right, I hope that helps. Ciao.